All right, so though, I'm going to talk about making images smarter, or a fancier way to say a dynamic image manipulation infrastructure for WordPress. Um, you can follow along the slides at that link there. But first, a little bit about me. Um, my name is Russell Heimlich. Heimlich like the maneuver. I like to dress like a hobo when I work and dress up fancy when I play. <laughs> Brian mentioned earlier, I'm the lead developer at Spirited Media. We're a small local news startup. We have sites in Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, and Denver. Um, and we might be a small team, but we sure do produce a lot, of, uh, a lot of images. So every day we publish multiple articles, and in, in those articles we have at least one image. Um, so if you do the math, that adds up to be, oh, I don't know, over 100 gigabytes of media that we have stored in, a, in our WordPress media library. So, um, well, let's get to the problem first. So the problem is we had a redesign, and in a redesign, the layout changes, and when the layout changes, we need different sized images. And nothing strikes fear into a WordPress developer when a designer says, can we just add one more image size, right? Because the way WordPress works is you have to, when you upload an image, it takes that image and it crunches down smaller sizes. And if you need to if you need add another image size, you then have to crunch them all over again. Because you wouldn't want a huge image to appear in the spot where a smaller one would do. Right? So there are ways to handle this. There are plugins for it. There's command line tools for it. And so we took that route with this redesign that we were working on. And um, so we went ahead, we hit the button, and we waited. We waited for it to crunch. Um, any guesses how long it took us to wait? Three days later, we finally had gone through all of our media and crunched it to the sizes we needed. Um, and that was only two sites. And we have ambitions of taking over the world, and this does not help to take three days to recrunch all our media. It's only going to get worse. Ain't nobody got time for that. So why do properly sized images even matter, right? Why can't we just use a bigger image in, in, in place of where a smaller exact size would fit? And the answer to that is speed, which has been a common theme that we've talked about in all the talks here. My favorite analysis of this has to be this tweet, which compares the size of websites to the size of the original Doom install file. So the web's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Pages are getting larger and larger and larger. And you know, speed is a big issue. It's a big barrier to, to people on the web. So serving the right size image for a given screen, it decreases the bandwidth that's needed to load your page. It decreases the download time. It uses less CPU power, thinking mobile devices, because everyone's accessing things on the web, on the mobile phones now. And it results in faster page load times to use the right size images at the right time. And ultimately, that gives us happier readers. And happier readers are more likely to give us money and to support what we're trying to do. So what we need to do is we need to be able to find a way that we can scale images on demand. That's, that's what we need for this problem. And there are a couple of solutions out there. So there are commercial services like Cloudinary, Thank you, WordCamp sponsor, and ImageIX. But they cost money, and we're a startup. We don't have much money. And we're a local news startup, so we really don't have any money. Um, so those are kind of out of the question for now. There's a free service from Jetpack. Thank you, WordCamp sponsor. Um, <laughs> they have a product called ImageCDN, which is formerly known as Photon. That probably could do the job, but we don't really want to rely on a third-party service that's giving away their thing for free, because if they change it, we need to be in control a little more. So actually, there is an open source solution made by HumanMade. Thank you, WordCamp sponsor. I, <laughs> I didn't plan this at all. It just happened that way. Um, so they have a product that's called Tachyon, and it's based off of Photon, which is what Jetpack was using. Um, and it runs on AWS architecture, which is actually what our websites are working on. Um, so we set it up, and it was working OK, but we ran into some issues with it. I'll gloss over all those details conveniently because it's only a lightning talk, but if you really want to know, you can come talk to me after this. Um, so what we did is we forked it, and we made our own version. We call it Tachyon at Edge. And here's kind of a brief overview of how it works. So our CMS, our WordPress site, uploads all of our media to an S3 bucket, so all of our images live in one place. When a user access, accesses an image, um, it hits this CloudFront CDN, and from there we can make a decision on what we want to do with that request. So using Lambda at, uh, Lambda at Edge, which sits on the, on the edge of the CDN there, we can actually make choices. We can say, hey, we can resize this image. We can check if there's a cached version of this resized image. And then we can serve the, the request appropriately. Um, so all that really means is that if take this, this lovely original image here 
And we can easily transform it just by adding a query string to it. So what we're doing here is we're resizing it to be 300 pixels wide and 600 pixels tall. We're flopping it uh, horizontally and flipping it vertically, and we're inverting the colors. So this means now we can get any image size we need on demand without having to crunch through our entire media library. If there's any change requested from design, we can just implement that change right away. It makes things a lot more flexible. There's less friction. We can try out different things. This also gives us a lot of unlimited source set options. So when we load an image, we can specify different sizes of images that should load for different screen widths. And this creates a much, much more performant page. So we actually, after we put all this infrastructure in place, we did a migration of a site. Um, they were just using a standard out-of-the-box WordPress theme. And all we had to do was just download all their, their uh, media library, upload it to our S3 bucket, and then we were good to go. And the numbers actually speak for themselves. So this is a graph of the uh, page size of, of our images for the home page. Can anyone guess when we did the migration? <laughs> so, there, so there's a pretty dramatic difference um, when you can serve properly sized images. And, all, and this was possible just because we made um, a small infrastructure change. So I'm really happy to announce that at this conference that we're actually open sourcing this. So anyone who wants to dynamically resize images on AWS infrastructure could take a look at it, see how it works, play with it, do whatever you want. Um, I was going to try to be prepared and do it ahead of time, but then I saw that Chris Van Patten and his talk open source something while on stage, so I thought, oh, I'll do that too. Um, so I just clicked the button. Now I need to enter my password. And now it should be public there. So you can go there now and you can see um, all the instructions and how it works. Big props to HumanMade, who open sourced their original project that's um, based off of this. And hopefully, it is of use to someone so that you can spend less time crunching images and more time doing cooler stuff. Thank you. <laughs>